Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unofficial Zoo. My name is Zach and today we are talking about TDS or Total Dissolved Solids and really what it means and doesn't mean for your aquarium and specifically in this video for your shrimp tank. Um, now I think TDS is a very common tool, it's a very useful tool, um, but it really does have its limitations and I just think a lot of people don't quite understand what it's actually reading and what it's telling you. Um, and if you don't understand that, it's very easy to misconstrue the importance of TDS or misconstrue what it's saying. Um, so yeah, I'm just hoping to give a little bit of clarity about what this measurement is, the science behind it, um, and how you can effectively use it for your aquarium. Um, now, I'm going to be focusing on shrimp tanks, but hopefully this will also be helpful for people who are keeping other things, other fish, um, and also just people who may, might, be wanted to, might want to test their tap water. Um, and just know what a TDS reading actually says about it. Um, I'm also at the end of this video going to be mentioning um, what happened with the tank in my last video. If you didn't see my last video, basically one of my pure redline crystal red shrimp tanks was having just a few deaths every day, like one to five shrimp were dying daily for a week straight. Um, and it is an aquarium with several hundred shrimps, so a few shrimp a day is not that many, but it is enough to be a little bit alarmed and for me to go about trying to figure out what's wrong and correct the issue before it became more substantial and more severe. Um, so I will mention at the end of this video how TDS was a diagnostic tool um, in that situation. But before we got there, I wanna tell you guys all the reasons TDS is not a good tool and is not a diagnostic tool. So let's dive into that. Um, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids and it's something that's super easy to measure. Um, you simply get one of these pens. Now, uh, a lot of water filtration kits will come with a TDS pen for free. You can get this on Amazon for like 10 or 20 bucks. Um, it's a super cheap thing to measure. Uh, it's also super fast and simple. You turn it on, you dip it in water, and it gives you a number. So I'm just gonna let it lock in. It already gave me a, me gave me a measurement. It just takes a second to lock in. Um, so it's locked in. The TDS of that aquarium is 193. And that is a little bit high for my Caradina tanks, um, but it's not alarmingly high or too high or anything. And I haven't seen any problems in the tank. Um, and TDS doesn't necessarily mean anything. So let's, let's talk about what TDS measures. Um, essentially, TDS is a measure of conductivity. So if we look at what's actually measured, you know, what the, the probe actually is, you see these two little metal um, poles and essentially what this pen is doing is trying to run an electric charge from one to the other. Um, and TDS is essentially a measure of conductivity based on how conductive the water is. Um, it makes an estimation on how many ions are dissolved in the water. Now, a quick chemistry lesson behind this, um, pure water will not conduct electricity, but if there is something, to, if there is an ion, a, a polar ion dissolved in the water, those ions can conduct electrical current. Um, so essentially what this probe is doing is measuring the conductivity of the water um, and based on that giving you an estimate of how many ions are dissolved in the water. Um, similar to pure water, air does not uh, conduct electricity, so you have a reading of zero if it's not dipped in the water. Um, but this is and isn't a useful tool. So um, for the most part in monitoring your tank's water parameters, TDS isn't going to tell you a whole lot. And the reason for this um, is let, like, let's talk about what actually contributes to that reading. So this, the reading on this pen was 193, um, but what is that measuring? So TDS, total dissolved solids, measures the amount of salts, metals, ions, and other water soluble minerals and compounds in the water. Um, some common examples that you might find in tap water or an aquarium include nitrates, some forms of ammonia, depending on the pH, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, carbonates, bicarbonates, chloride, sulfates, the list really goes on. Um, just because there's so many different types of ions that can be dissolved in the water. Um, water is called the universal solvent because it can dissolve so many different materials. Um, and for that reason, TDS is an incredibly broad spectrum measurement, um, which again, can absolutely be misleading or not helpful at all um, because it's measuring so many different things. For example, let's talk about the water test that you wanna be doing for a shrimp tank specifically. Um, the main things that we're gonna be monitoring, monitoring are, of course, your nitrogen levels, so ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate to make sure the nitrogen cycle is working properly. But also we're gonna be looking at the pH, GH, and KH. Um, as for caradina shrimp specifically, all of those are incredibly important to make sure that your shrimp are thriving properly and able to molt properly, things like that. Um, so if we look at pH, that is a measure of hydrogen or hydroxide ions in the water. 
that will contribute to your TDS reading. Um, GH is general hardness is a measure of the carbonates dissolved in your, or sorry, not carbonates, is a measure of the calcium and magnesium dissolved in your water. Both of those are ions and will affect your TDS reading. Um, KH is a measure of carbonate hardness in your water, which is a measure of the carbonate ions in your water, which will contribute to your TDS reading. Um, and again, your, your nitrogen readings are all ions and depending on the pH will contribute to your TDS reading. Um, so really, TDS tells you that your water is not pure, but it doesn't tell you what's in your water or, you know, what impurities are in your water. It just tells you how pure your water is and how well it conducts electricity. Um, so in isolation, if you were to just use TDS to try to figure out what's wrong with an aquarium, this is completely unhelpful. Um, it, it, again, it doesn't tell you anything that's in your water. Um, it could be copper killing your shrimp. It could be ammonia, nitrite, nitrate killing your shrimp. It could be your GH or KH is out of whack. Your pH is out of whack. It's not going to tell you what. It's just going to tell you something's dissolved in your water. Um, so that's not really that helpful. Um, there are a few contexts when TDS is super helpful, especially in shrimp keeping. Um, one is that, especially with Caradina shrimp, a lot of people will use purified water in their shrimp tanks. Um, so you won't use water directly out of your tap. You'll actually filter it and purify it either through reverse osmosis, deionization, distillation, or some combination of those three. Um, those are the most common water purification methods for um, hobbyists. Um, but essentially what TDS is going to do is once the water comes out of your filtration system, tell you how pure the water is. Really anything under 10 is going to be considered basically pure water. Um, I'll even let my deionization system get up to a TDS of like 30 before I change the resin and I haven't experienced problems. Um, but really this pen is just going to tell you when you need to do maintenance on your uh, purification system, whether that's changing the deionization resin, changing the reverse osmosis membrane, doing some sort of maintenance on your distillation system, um, whatever it is, TDS is going to help you measure the purity of your water as it comes out of that purification system. So that's a situation when it's helpful. Um, another situation when it's helpful is I'm reaching for um, my remineralizer. So once you have this purified water, you can't just put shrimp in pure water um, because it it affects the osmosis in their bodies. I'm not going to get into the biological or, or the biochemistry there, um, but you do need to remineralize your water. You can't keep shrimp in pure water. Um, so if you're using something like the salty shrimp B mineral GH plus, um, you can actually use TDS to remineralize your water and see how much of this you need to put in your water. It does come with instructions of adding uh, about one spoon or about three grams per 20 liters of water. So you can absolutely follow those measurement instructions or you can put some in your water um, and just do a TDS reading. And with this product specifically, you'll want to remineralize to a TDS of around 150. Um, again, people have success at different TDS levels um, because again, TDS doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, but yeah, instead of you know doing manual measurements, especially when you have as many aquariums as I do, um, this just becomes tedious and it's easier to just do a quick TDS measurement. Um, so measuring water purification, measuring how far to remineralize your water are two examples of when to use TDS. The other time I really t use TDS is when acclimating shrimp from one tank to another, or when I get new shrimp from a local fish store or online, when I'm acclimating the shrimp, TDS is a super useful tool. Um, just because you can take the TDS of the water they came in and take the TDS of the tank they are going into and actually use the difference in TDS as a way to quantify how acclimated the shrimp are. Um, kind of an, as an example of this, let's say that I have shrimp uh, in TDS of 100 and I'm moving them to a tank with a TDS of 150. Um, as I'm acclimating them, when the TDS, let's say, hits 125 in their acclimation tank, I know that the acclimation process is about halfway done. Um, because we're halfway between the initial acclimation tank and the tank that they're going into, if that makes sense. Um, right, 125 is between is in the middle of 100 and 150. Um, so TDS is super helpful for um, quantifying the acclimation process and knowing how long you have to acclimate your shrimp before you can introduce them to a new tank. Um, but it's not really going to tell you anything about the health of your tank or what might be going wrong in your aquarium. So while TDS is useful for measuring the purity of your water and how well your water purification system is working, and it's also useful for remineralizing your purified water um, and also acclimation of shrimp from one tank to another, um, most of the time it's not gonna be useful in everyday monitoring of your aquarium or diagnosing an issue in your aquarium. 
Um, again, because it is broad, so broad spectrum, it's, it's not giving you much useful information other than your water is not pure. Um, in one situation I had recently, if you saw my last video, um, TDS was the diagnostic tool that provided useful information. Um, now to give you guys context, if you didn't see my last video, basically I had between one and five shrimp dying every single day for a week straight in this pure red line crystal red shrimp tank. Um, it's my mid to low grade tank and there are maybe three to 400 shrimp in a 20, 20 gallon aquarium. Um, so a couple of shrimp a day isn't that substantial, um, but it is enough to be alarming and for me to wanna take some action to try to figure out what's causing the deaths just to prevent anything catastrophic from happening. Um, and you know, of course I don't wanna see dead shrimp in my tanks. I don't want my shrimp to die, I want them to thrive. Um, so, you know, I did the, the whole set of water tests. I tested for my nitrogen cycle. All of those tests came back fine. Um, I tested my pH, GH, KH, all of those tests came back normal. Um, but my TDS was quite elevated. I normally keep my caridina tanks between 120 and 200. I'm not particularly picky as long as my shrimp are happy. Um, this tank in particular had a TDS of 275, which is quite high for my caridina tanks. Um, and again, if you didn't see my last couple of videos, um, I did have to take two months off for a pretty substantial back surgery that I had. Um, which meant no water changes for a while. So my TDS was super high, nothing else was registering. So my plan of action at that point was just to do a series of water changes to try to drop the TDS back below 200 and really try to get it back around 170. Um, so after, my plan here was to do 20% water changes every other day until my TDS was down in you know the, the 170 range. Um, and really after the first water change, all of my shrimp stopped dying. Um, I saw one more death, which was like a day after the second water change, um, but really the death stopped. So kind of my best conclusion here is that there was some sort of mineral that was being added to my aquarium um, or salt or metal or something that was just detrimental to my shrimp tank. Now, the things that I add to my aquarium, um, there are a couple things, you know, I add a variety of commercial shrimp foods. This one is fluval shrimp granules. I have some other higher end foods. Um, like shrimp king foods and things like that. Um, these can definitely um, release minerals, compounds, ions into your aquarium that increase the TDS slowly over time. But again, generally with these shrimp products, these commercial shrimp products, um, you know, it's, they're not gonna release anything deadly or detrimental. Uh, and it's gonna take quite a few months of, you know, this buildup to really cause any sort of catastrophic problem, especially in a planted aquarium. Um, and a lot of people won't even do water changes on their shrimp tanks for months at a time and not have problems. Uh, again, another product I use is Bacter AE, which definitely can raise the TDS. It's literally kind of like a biofilm nutrient solution or nutrient powder. Um, it helps grow biofilm in your aquarium. So this definitely can raise TDS, but again, it's not something that's gonna be building up that's toxic to your shrimp. And it's actually really designed to help biofilm grow. So I don't think the problem was with those foods. Actually, I think the problem was with this spirulina powder I was using. Now, I saw this um, in someone's fish room on a YouTube video. I don't remember whose fish room or which YouTube video, but essentially he was feeding a crystal, or not a crystal, right? He was feeding a cherry shrimp colony spirulina powder and the colony was exploding. And there are a lot of reasons why this makes a really good food for a shrimp tank. Um, if we look at this food, it's a very fine powder. You can see it. Oop. I just dropped a bunch on the floor, um, but it powders up. It's really, really fine. It's like microscopic granules. Um, and for that reason, when you add it to a shrimp tank, it kind of dusts the entire aquarium and gives like a little green snow dusting across the whole tank. Um, and because it's so fine and small, it's a great baby shrimp food. Also, like it has the uh, nutritional breakdown and it has great macro and micronutrients. Like all around, it's a very complete food. Um, that has great nutrients for baby shrimp, but I did see lots of success with baby shrimp in that aquarium while feeding this food. I think the issue here is that it's not made for freshwater shrimp tanks. Um, this product actually was made for like people to add to their smoothies. I don't know that a little bit of spirulina powder is gonna do much for human health or human nutrition, um, but it can definitely be great for shrimp tanks other than spirulina is a marine species. Um, and I've grown marine uh, algae, I've grown marine phytoplankton, uh, and you grow it in a saltwater nutrient solution. Uh, and, and to extract algae out in a powder like this, 
Um, they probably filtered it somehow into like a wet mush and then dried that out and created a very fine powder from it. And so I think that there are a few things that could have happened. I think that the spirulina could have absorbed some minerals or some nutrients from that water, um, some ions that could be harmful to my shrimp tank um, when they build up over time. I think that, uh, you know, as they dried it out, some of the nutrient solution was left. Some of the ions and minerals from the nutrient solution was left in the powder as the water evaporated out. Um, I think there's a variety thing of things that could have been left in this powder that over time built up in my shrimp tank uh, and just ended up being lethal. Like one basic example would be sodium chloride. Sodium chloride would not show up on my nitrogen test. It would not show up in pH, GH, KH, but it would show up in TDS um, because sodium chloride uh, are, and, well, sodium and chlorine are ions that would register on a TDS pen among many, many other salts and many other minerals and metals. Um, so I think something in that product specifically um, just built up over the couple months that I was gone and impacted the TDS of that aquarium. Um, and you know, it was some sort of salt or mineral that was detrimental to my shrimp. Shrimp can be kind of randomly sensitive to a variety of things. Like most fish are not affected by copper, but copper ions in a shrimp tank will destroy your shrimp tank. Um, a lot of invertebrates are sensitive to copper ions. So, you know, there's, there's a whole wide range of things that could be in that algae powder that over time built up and caused problems in the weaker set of shrimp in that tank. Um, didn't register on anything except the TDS pen. So this is one instance where TDS really was the only measurement that was able to tell me something was going wrong. And it wasn't able to tell me what was going wrong, but just that something had built up in the water and was causing problems. Um, so I think, you know, in 90% of uh, cases where you have shrimp dying in, aquarium, in an aquarium, you're gonna see a problem with the nitrogen cycle, or you're gonna see a problem with your pH, GH, or KH, or, you know, upon visual inspection of the dead shrimp or of shrimp that are um, in the tank, you'll see um, a parasite or a fungus or signs of bacterial infection, signs of muscle necrosis, some sort of behavioral change in the tank. But really none of that was present in this aquarium. Um, it was just kind of, it seems like a, a, a problem with some salt or metal or something that over time became toxic to the shrimp um, that built up. And, you know, as soon as I did water changes was resolved. So really happy that I was able to figure out the issue, really happy, um, oops, sorry, um, you know, really happy that we were able to figure out this issue, but I don't want to misconstrue this as, oh my God, TDS is the, you know, is a miracle test measurement. No, TDS sucks um, for most situations. It's really not going to tell you much, um, but in combination with normal results from all of these other tests, you know, being able to rule everything else out and see that TDS was the one thing that remained that was just abnormal was enough of an indicator to me as an experienced shrimp keeper to go explore that as being the potential problem. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that, you know, this was digestible and understandable. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions um, or if you've had similar experiences or if you have a shrimp tank that you're having problems with. I'd love to help you guys figure out what's going wrong in your shrimp tanks. Um, and yeah, I just hope this video is able to help demystify um, the TDS measurement because I think a lot of people just use this measurement incorrectly or read into it too far. Um, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for my next video. All right, bye guys.